So, as hopefully everybody noticed, last year we got our first official new holiday since uh, 1983. And uh, as a person who's a fan of holidays, this is very, it's actually very exciting. And I think this holiday is like an exceptional reason to celebrate. So the problem is um, there's quite a few people that aren't necessarily um, really aware of this holiday and maybe don't necessarily know how to celebrate. So let's, uh, let's explore. And if you're not aware, don't feel bad. As in my research, I came across plenty of this. Even shameless to say this, but like blackish episode, like is what put me on blue Juneteenth. I'm talking about Ju so this uh, the episode we do to turn down to our blackness. Well, we're never gonna not have to do that, son. Look, people are never gonna celebrate something they barely even want to admit happened. Look, I get that, but Just at least can we have one day where the country acknowledged it? Just real quick. I don't, I don't think the issue in America is like not wanting to acknowledge that slavery happened. If anything, I think like it errs on the side of this being a hyper emphasis focus on the development of the country. In fact, to the point like in a in a college placement, advanced placement test for um, for history right now, literally like 48 percent of the questions are revolving around uh, slavery and racism. So. I don't think it's necessarily it doesn't want to be acknowledged, but uh, let's continue because, again, I, I kind of generally like this this take on, on um, what the what the holiday should be. It would feel like, I don't know, an apology. Wow. Can you imagine that? Oh, hell no. Instead of waiting for an apology, why don't we just do something? I mean, if we want to honor the end of slavery, then we should celebrate Juneteenth. Wait, that's what Juneteenth is. We don't celebrate the end of slavery, but you wake us up early on Cyber Monday. <laughs> you point. are a bad black person. Yeah. You know what? Not anymore. From now on, we will be black out loud. Oh. Our whole family will celebrate Juneteenth. All right. Boom! I know where to buy strawberry soda. And I'll make a mean red velvet cake. I'll fire up the grill that loud and black enough for you. Yep. Mm -hmm. I'll hang up my stocking. <laughs> wow, buddy. So, what uh, what specifically is Juneteenth? Let's uh, let's look here. So, um, a proclamation from June 18th, 2021. Nearly nine decades after our nation's founding, more than two years after President Lincoln signed Emancipation Proclamation, enslaved Americans in Galveston, Texas, finally received word that they were free from bondage. As those who were formerly enslaved, we recognize for the first time as citizens, black Americans came to commemorate Juneteenth with celebrations across the country, building new lives and a new tradition that we honor today. In its celebration of freedom, Juneteenth is a day that should be recognized by all Americans, agreed, and that is why I'm proud to have uh, proud to have consecrated Juneteenth as our newest national holiday. Juneteenth is a day of profound weight. Um, the rest is Joe Biden's take, and I'm going to continue on with the history because I don't believe any holiday should be a shame fest, as I've said this before. And I actually think Juneteenth has a special significance for for quite literally all Americans to be able to celebrate the fact that we uh, removed this institution of slavery that we can trace past thousands of years. I mean, it was a, it was a, um, um, a very, very profound thing that was born out of the West of being able to get rid of this, I mean, literally human's existence long institution and not just to get rid of it, but to make it like so reviled, like we made it where it's a absolutely reviled thing universally. And it's been like really rare in the human experience that you've been able to take something that was so ingrained into the human experience for so long and come up with such grand consensus about it being immoral and wanting it eradicated entirely. So I think this is certainly cause to celebrate. I'm, I'm, I am very, very, very happy with this holiday, and I think it's a long time coming. I'm actually surprised that uh, we really hadn't pushed for um, a holiday of this nature before, and I think there's a number of reasons for that. I think... Um, <laughs> I, I I think um, um, 
one of the big ones would just be in the context of the time when you had 3% of the nation that were slave owners, you would have a lot of individuals that were generally lamented slavery and were happy to see it go. And that was the general track from the beginning of the country. But there would have been maybe a lot of individuals outside the 3% that were uh, immediately you know, immediately profiting from this, they were happy to see it go, but maybe didn't understand the like actual significance of seeing it gone. Uh, they didn't have quite the the direct um, correlation with their lives, and it's a uh, yeah, it's a holiday. I think it's a long time coming. So let's look into it a bit more. Um, Juneteenth. So what had happened was, and you may ask yourself, well, we had the Emancipation Proclamation, which, yes, this took place. But remember, in the context of the time, this took place in quite literally the, you know, the middle of the Civil War. And so in that, in that period, we for sure, and like we mean the American people, um, I guess I'm using we and nomenclature at the Union right now, but we're able to enforce the Emancipation Proclamation in areas that were under control of the Union, so areas of the South that had already been like conquered. But as you move south and west and look at areas like Texas in particular, there, um, there wasn't necessarily a way to enforce the proclamation until the Civil War was complete, and there certainly wouldn't have been like a clear way to disseminate the information. Um, it's... It's not known for sure, but it's largely assumed that this was, you know, I mean, very, very clearly slave owners would have would have um, not benefited from this being this information being disseminated. So they very likely would have worked hard to prevent it from being disseminated. So what we see happen is hang on, let me try and get out of your picture a little bit there. Um, what we see happen is in 1965. Uh, a uh, General Gordon Granger comes by ship to Galveston, Texas, to make the proclamation that all slaves are, in fact, to be freed. General Orders Number 3, read on June 19, 1865, announcing all slaves are free. It's one of Galveston's most important historical moments, and, you know, one of our, one of our nation's most historical moments. And so... This June 19th, 1865, it, it um, freed some of the last remaining 250,000 enslaved individuals and thus was begun to be uh, celebrated as, the, last, or as the, the day of freedom for slaves. And at least very, very locally at first. This was a, a largely local holiday in Texas for a period of, you know, the better part of 100 years. And as, as people moved and as the word spread, this holiday kind of grew traction and expanded around the nation. Um, it was to celebrate the official end of slavery in the United States. But as we'll see with all things in history, you know, history is just kind of complicated. Um, it really is just kind of more more complex than we realize. And so, though more factually, there actually was the institution of slavery that remained for a period beyond. Um, we saw actually on the tribal lands, they still maintained slaves as late as 1866. It wasn't until the Treaty of 1866 that the Creeks were, were um, by order of treaty, no longer to participate in slavery. Um, similar happened with the Cherokee. Many of the Indian nations had begun the war on the South. They were sided with the Confederates. And over the course of the, of the war, changed position, more neutral, or even slightly siding towards the Union. And so we saw some of the nations actually give a proclamation of emancipation, but nothing was truly ratified until the Treaty of 1866. And so, more accurately, it's quite interesting. There actually would have been a Juneteenth celebration, the first anniversary in June 19th of 1866, which would have been, I mean, literally even before truly the end of slavery. Like, as, as I said, things in history are, are generally more complicated than we realize. We, we really got to use a sense of charity when trying to look and understand history. But as I tried to learn about this holiday, so... I wanted to learn, you know, make sure I had a good grasp of both the history and then some of the traditions that should be celebrated. Because, again, it's a national holiday now, so 
I think we should take a look at some of the traditions that have been established over the over the uh, uh, creation expansion of this holiday, and then how do we how do we put this into practice this year? So, one of the things that made trying to do the research very very difficult was like <sighs> most of the articles, particularly. I mean, very particularly if written by a white person, there's like this extraordinary amount of white knighting in it. And it would be something along the lines of like, but you didn't learn that in the history books or, but they didn't, but they didn't teach you that in the history books. And you know, like the thing is, even if they did, the probability is you probably wouldn't have remembered it. I mean, like we're, we're practically historically illiterate and in this country, and that's a problem that's been going back for like 20, 30 years. You know, it's, it's, I think, hang on, I actually pulled up a bit of this earlier because this is quite astounding. Um, let's see, 7% of Americans could name our first four presidents. 30% knew that Jefferson was the nation's third president. Um, slightly more than half Americans knew that Jefferson was the main author of the Declaration of Independence. Um in a similar survey, what they found was 68% of Americans were 68% um, of Americans were aware that uh, George Washington was a was a um, uh, um, revolutionary era general. So, like these are like major things about our history and our heritage, and even these are kind of not known. So, imagining that you, unless very recently, as it became more popular and more widespread that you would have been aware of like specific geographical nuance of the uh, delivering of the Emancipation Proclamation or or even like practically how it shook out in the legal sense. You know, you 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 barely know anything about our first president or for, <laughs> and most people can't even tell you what uh, oh, how many presidents we've had. So the probability of you knowing like, you know, um, regionally celebrated holidays seems not really likely. So, again, in looking at this, I made a significant effort to look into the different celebrated traditions and having to wade through a great amount of critique for the fact that you are not well-versed in this yet. But as we said, history is kind, of, kind of messy. And, like, for instance, you know, you may not, you may not, and you probably, there's a decent chance you may not have known about Juneteenth. It seems high probability you didn't until quite recently. Um, but, you know, it's probably also likely you were, even though there's a Hollywood film about it, entirely unfamiliar that the sixth president of the United States actually, you know, led a, led a case before the Supreme Court to have a, uh, a slave trade ship of African captives returned. You know, a sixth president brought the the claim against the um, Van Buren um, administration. And this was, you know, a fairly profound kind of beginning workings of establishing legal precedents and steps towards abolition. This was after the abolition of the slave trade because there was a sunset clause at the creation of America. The goal was from day one in the United States was to get rid of the horrible trade of slavery. And we can track this really, really well. We can track this with um, looking that, yeah, quite literally, there was going to be a sunset clause on the transatlantic slave route. And so what happened was people still did participate in this. I mean, British let waged like a 60-year war to get rid of it, and the United States said there'd be no more participation in the in the uh, um, international slave trade. And what happened was a, a heroic group of in, enslaved individuals took a, you know, a fight against the captain of the ship and more or less commandeered the ship and had sailed up the East Coast to where it was commandeered, and then there was a legal determination of what would, what was to take place at this point. And um, it was a very, very profound case at the time. And again, probability, and, and, and it's not even just that it was a profound case and that there was a large, you know, um, um, La Amistad Commission even created of abolitionists to raise funds for the legal proceedings and and uh, uh, the effort to try and learn language to be able to communicate and bring this case, you know, to court. But it was quite literally a former president that former president that 
was the attorney bringing the case? I mean, this is this is huge, huge aspect of history that also you probably didn't know. So the only point here is, yep, you probably didn't know about Juneteenth, and maybe maybe you should have. But there's probably a lot of points in history you probably should have. So the 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 grander point being, it's great that we have it now, and we should make a significant effort to to learn about that and understand it, like with all areas of our history, though. Um, so. What specifically, let's get to the the more important and most specific here, what should you be doing? We know kind of the why, the history of Juneteenth being the, the kind of officially recognized day, though actually not entirely accurate because, again, as we said, <laughs> tribal lands, but officially recognized day in which the um, all the remaining slaves in U.S. controlled territory specifically were made aware of the Emancipation Proclamation and known that they were, in fact, now free. And uh, so what we saw this celebrated in, um, in a number of, like, actually really, really awesome ways. So, again, because I'm a huge fan of holidays here at the channel, all about this one. So, um, first off, the... Um, the one thing I would, if I am able to give any personal opinion, is us learning to remember that this is, you know, a day celebrating freedom. And there's often seems to be this correlation with it in Fourth of July because of the term independence. But the term independence of Fourth of July was independence from England. So, moreover, moreover, you still have like a defined Independence Day, the day in which we have our independence from England. That was, you know, the advent and birth of the nation. And, you know, now also in addition, you have Juneteenth, you know, Freedom Day or whatever other nomenclature we're going to end up um, um, settling on with it. Um, and so what we see it marked with is um, uh, this is from the Smithsonian. So what we see it end up marked with is a particular outdoor centric celebration and marked by a a handful of specific dishes. One, uh, and, and a large theme of it is going to be uh, red. A lot of emphasis on red. Red to mark, you know, the bloodshed in the course to have um, uh, abolition of slavery and free peoples. And so lots and lots, as much as you can get in the food spectrum, that is red. So, for instance, I have today this. This in particular, I will share with you because I think this is a great, but for the kids, you know, it can be red soda, it can be strawberry soda, it can be hibiscus tea. That's a great one too. You can buy in the tea bags or I actually bought hibiscus syrup in order to make both this and do the child version of it later on. But uh, here you go. I'll share with you. So I'm going to, here we go real quick. So you're going to do... Um, strawberries preferably like muddled uh half or some well this is for making a whole pitcher but just broadly granulated sugar fresh ginger fresh ginger and strawberries muddled and then i use hibiscus syrup instead of the strawberry syrup you could use the syrup the strawberry syrup i did hibiscus because you know how often do you get to use hibiscus syrup so you know let's uh let's uh do it for this um, cognac, unsweetened pineapple juice, unsweetened pomegranate juice, two ounces of lime juice. We use fresh lime juice, uh, three ounces of ginger beer, you know, um, ginger ale and, uh, 12 ounces of dry sparkling wine. And this came out fantastic. So preferably something, yeah, something red. What? You laughing at me? What are you laughing about? So, red cocktail for the kids is hibiscus syrup or red soda. Um, and then into the the sides, there seems to be a lot of the southern regulars. So, um, um, cornbread, you know, red beans and rice. Again, we're trying to kick, put as much red as we can. And then for the actual meats, this is where we're going to have a bit of a break from Memorial Day. If you remember, Memorial Day, hot dogs were acceptable. Hot dogs are okay for Memorial Day, you know, preferably play around, try try different regions of the country maybe, experiment with somebody else's type of a hot dog. But for this one particular, we class it up a little bit because 
as I read and as I tried to follow, there did seem to be a couple different schools of thought on the food, but uh, it seemed quite regular that you would want it, that there was an emphasis on doing a little bit more like upscale as it was something meant to be very special and maybe a celebration of foods that previously slaves would have been mostly forbidden or prevented from having access to, except for maybe an extraordinarily special circumstances. So we're talking like large cuts, you know, brisket, brisket's a, a big one here. No, again, no hot dogs, unless if you're going to do them, hot links are acceptable because of coloration, because of red. So if you are going to do it specific hot links, hot links are okay on this one, but we, we would much rather you do something like, you know, brisket. Um, even even hamburgers seemed in some context okay, and then there seemed to be split on the fried chicken. There seemed to be some people in the camp of more barbecue-centric foods, and then there seemed to be some in the camp that were um, fried chicken fans. And it seemed specifically even uh, interesting, some of the more elderly people explaining made an emphasis on the fried chicken because they said it would have been like a pre-cooked portable kind of harken back to the period of like underground railroad. And so feel free, go the fried chicken route if it's your thing, but only if you do it well, if not stick with the barbecue stuff. Um, and then for dessert, obviously, you know, this, this one's going to be like, should be a no brainer, but red velvet cake, you can also do strawberry pie, but something that has lots and lots of red. Like we want not not just a little bit. Strawberry shortcake probably isn't quite red enough. It's got it's got some red going on, not enough. Maybe if you dye the the whipped cream, you might be able to get away with it then. In fact, that'd probably be okay. Um, I don't know if red pudding is a thing for Juneteenth, but I'm probably gonna make it a thing. Um, so yeah, desserts, lots of red. I'm going to have a bite because I've been staring at this the entire time now and I'm actually getting like kind of hungry. Okay. So, and then decorations. Now, what we're going to encourage for decorations is front yard similar to what you did for Memorial Day. In fact, quite honestly, you leave your Memorial Day stuff up from Memorial Day till after 4th of July. Um, preferably even through the entire month of July if you like, but at a minimum from Memorial Day before Memorial Day to July 5th, the yard should be decorated. Um, the actual place setting, you, again, we're going with lots of red. So red cups, red plates, um, red tablecloth, or at least like the red and white patchy kind of traditional tablecloth, but lots and lots of red. And... Um, and then for the dress, now, this seems to be a deviation from the very beginning to now. And I'm going to suggest that we do go all the way back to the more the more beginning of Juneteenth in regards to dress. So Memorial Day is a little more like laid back in the dress, right? You're going to, you know, kind of just have like your shorts and Hawaiian shirts are fine. And um, whereas, you know, or just whatever you'd normally wear for a cookout. It's a little more laid back, but it looks like Juneteenth historically, at least very early on when we look, um, what, what would have taken place would have been really, really sharp dressing. As they put up on the screen here. Um, the, the uh, you know, the concept here was a couple fold. One was that um, I, I, be I believe in periods, but, predominantly in the South, there was like a large discouragement amongst, um, I mean, of black people to dress in a manner that was, you know, nice. And I believe this was discouraged. I don't know if this was legislatively discouraged via some of the Jim Crow laws. Um, I would, I would have to look more into this and I should, and I will, but I do know it was largely discouraged. So Juneteenth was a day in particular that there would be like this large amount of solidarity in choosing to dress nice and dress well. And obviously, I'm a fan of this because I think as Americans, we've just gotten sloppy with the dress in general. Like we've really, we've really, really like erred extremely on the side of comfort. And I don't and 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 dress like and our appearance often is very very sloppy. I think this is like probably tied almost like in the concept of like body like physiognomy, where like. 
we're presenting somehow on the outside how we feel inside. And as we've gotten like very, very sloppy and loose of our morals, we've gotten probably, probably like so in a lot of areas of our life. And thus we've ended up with an entire society that dresses like largely like they just got out of bed. So you know what? If that's how you do it. Normally you're going to do it different. So Juneteenth, you want to be wearing your Sunday best, maybe even better than that, because I've seen a lot of people this like Sunday best. And even that needs some work. So Juneteenth dressing nice. We want to be dressed nice. We want our food, lots of red, as much red as we can possibly get. Um, again, this one specific, hot dogs and no, unless they're hot links, you can do the hot links. But preferably go with more premium cuts. Remember, we're celebrating. This is a big deal. This is like arguably this, this I believe over time should end up shaking out as like one of our like top holidays. I don't know what I don't know why it wouldn't. Again, this is this was actually like a quite profound day and I'm really amazed that it, it took us till now to try and like codify this into law and to make it something that like all of Americans were going to participate in. So, I I think uh yeah, let's make this one like let's let's make this one classy and should you have any other suggestions or things that I missed or areas we can improve, put in the comments, but this is again a holiday that it seems um, nationwide, even even regardless of racial makeup, not everybody had celebrated it, or not everybody was fully um, accustomed to how it was going to be celebrated. And so, I've done I've done the work to try and <laughs> decipher through what's out there and uh, uh, come up with a plan. So, yeah, this is a good one. This uh, this is going to be exciting this year. So I hope to see and hear about all of your guys' plans, and see you out there Juneteenth. Let's do it. <laughs> let's celebrate. Yeah, let's celebrate. A lot to celebrate.